Y'all already know what it is, man. It's Kid Billionaire. Be super excited to be bringing you on this video today. I actually got a lot of requests. This is actually based on a reel that I did previously that actually has almost about over 800,000 views right now on my Instagram. So as promised, I wanted to make a longer version just to make sure that anybody who's watching it right now has a full understanding, full grasp, and can take it and make a whole bunch of money. For those who are new to the channel, my name is Brian Waldron, aka Billy and B. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I started a brick and mortar event space business whereby at the age of 26, we had done over three and a half million dollars in sales with just our event space business. Now I'm taking a lot of the same tools and tactics that I've used to grow my success and give it all the way to y'all. All right, let's get into it. So for this particular video, I wanna break down how to get approved for $50,000 with a brand new LLC. Now I know that sounds like, like something kind of crazy, like with a brand new LLC, what are you talking about? That's cat, that's wrong. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I want to just really emphasize the fact that this is possible. This is something that I've done. And this is something that also helped all, all our clients do in event space elites, where they come in, they get a credit stacking assessment, and then they know exactly what banks and credit cards to pull from because they now have a properly structured LLC to go ahead and do it, right? So for anybody who's watching right now, I want to give you the exact step-by-step -step framework so you can either go ahead and do it on your own, or you at least have some starting ground to go and get some more information, you know, what direction you want to go in. All right, so without further ado, let's jump right into it. Y'all know I don't like to waste any time, so let's get to it, right? So this is B. You're gonna call him B because I'm B, he can be too, right? You feel what I'm saying? So this is B right here. So B, what we want to start off with first is that when it comes down to getting business funding, one of the most important things that people need to understand is that you do need to have a good credit score, at least a 680 plus, as well as a properly built credit profile, right? Now, if you don't have those things, that's when the rest of the stuff kind of fills it up for you. Their credit is not a one-stop shop. Credit is a day one-stop process. There's different things. There's people who have 800 credit scores who go and get denied for funding. And there's people with 650 credit scores, they go and get 20, 30, $40,000 in funding. I've seen it. I see tons of credit reports every single week. Remember, we do credit report analysis it's in our program. So I see tons of different credit reports, right? So like I mentioned, if we're going with the assumption that B has a 680 credit score, what's the next step, right? The next step is to have an LLC and not only to have just an LLC, but to have a properly structured LLC. What does that look like, right? I'm gonna have a generic name. Now, a lot of people ask me, they're like, Brian, what should I name my LLC? To be honest, it really doesn't matter overall, but you wanna make sure that it's a generic name. Why do you want it to be a generic name? Because every single time that you go and apply for funding, the banks are looking at all these different things. They're looking at the name, they're looking at the classification, they're looking at your phone number, they're looking at your business address, they're looking at these different things to kind of piece you apart and say, mm, I don't know, this person is high risk. And that's the biggest part about it. You don't want your LLC, you don't want your business when you're applying for funding to be looked at as high risk. Because every single time they see something on your credit profile or on your LLC or on your business or on your website that looks risky, that funding just dropped. So instead of you getting $50,000, now you're getting $48,000. Instead of you getting $48,000, now you're getting $46,000 and so on and so forth, right? So the first thing is a generic name. So when it comes down to generic name, I have a very, very simple formula that I employ to all my clients, and it's last name plus enterprise, last name plus corp, last name plus solutions, right? Very, very generic name. So my last name is Waldron, so I would be Waldron Enterprises, Waldron Solutions, Waldron Corp, Waldron Investments. You know, you see what I'm saying? The next one is a phone number. Now, ideally, again, all these different steps, it's not like you're gonna go and not get funding at all but we're trying to optimize the bag right now. You know what I'm saying? Drop in the comments, optimize the bag. You feel what I'm saying? So when it comes down to optimizing the bag, I like to have a good phone number that doesn't look like a personal cell phone number. So that might be like an 800 number, an 855, an 866, whatever the case may be, right? Number three is a website. So when it comes down to your website, first and foremost, let's go with the domain, right? You might get a domain on GoDaddy or one of these other websites, whatever the case may be. Ideally, if you want to really be super fancy, super superb and on top of things like that, what I seen some people do is they do two different websites where one would be kind of like the proxy website where it's like logenenterprises.com it looks like general business solutions whatever the case may be nice and generic remember what i said and then they'll have a real website for their customers where it'll be like all right cool if you have an event space or whatever the case may be it'll be like logen events or whatever the case may be right now when it comes down to the email similar situation right we're not going to have 
hotbaby321 at gmail.com. Like we're not doing none of that. You feel what I'm saying? We're gonna have a properly structured professional email. Info at wardrobeenterprise.com. Hello at wardrobesolutions.com. Put it on one point down. And then the last but certainly not least and probably the most important thing is the NAICS code. What is an NAICS code? An NAICS code is the classification of your business, AKA the business category. When it comes down to the classification of your business, this is probably the most important thing because you can't do all these things right and then come back and have an AICS code that says you're a credit repair company. You out of here. You feel what I'm saying? You can't have all these things right and then it says event space and then it says Airbnb company and then it says all these different things, right? Ideally, you wanna set up your LLC to either be management or consulting. And those are the least risky NAICS codes, the least risky categories, management and consulting, right? Let's move over to step three. Once you've got your LLC, you're gonna go put your EIN. EIN is an employee identification number. This is basically your social security number for your business, right? The same way your SSN is, is nine digits, is the same way your EIN is nine digits. Keep that in mind right there. That's, that's a bar right there. You feel what I'm saying? With the EIN, um, if you ever are getting your LLC and you could use this for different websites, I'm not plugging any of them, but um, if you want to use like Swift Filings, Legal Zoom, Inc. File, they all basically do the same thing. Or you can just go on your state's uh, Secretary of State website um, and get your LLC. Then when you go over to your EIN, the EIN, a lot of these different websites will give you an upcharge and an option to go get the, L to get the EIN for you. Honestly, if it was me personally, I let them do that because if you try to go and get it for free via the IRS website, it could sometimes be a daunting task. It could sometimes be a little complicated. Sometimes they take extra long and it just becomes a hassle. So for me, I don't want to hassle. I would just rather have one website get everything for me and I'm out the door. And here's actually a quick trick. If y'all go through a website like swiftfilings.com and y'all go through the whole process, they're going to offer to pull your EIN for about $70 or something like that. If you wait until the end, when you're about to check out, they will discount and downsell that same option and offer to get the EIN for you for only $35. I hope nobody from Swift Filings is watching this video right now, but that's a tip with B, you feel me? Next. DMV number. DMV stands for Duns and Bradstreet. You can go to DMV.com. What a DMV number is, is essentially it is establishing your business credit worthiness. Now, I understand everybody always wants to talk about business credit, business credit, business credit. Like business credit is like the savior of all things bad credit. And it's really not. You have to understand to establish good business credit, you have to establish good personal credit. And I actually have another video right here where I'm breaking down exactly how to boost your credit score into the 700s so you can make sure that all this stuff makes sense for you, right? So when it comes down to the DMV, it's a very, very simple process. You go to dmv.com, you pay their fee or whatever the case may be, you upload your EIN, and then they'll send out your DMV number in like five to 10 days. Next up, bank account. You can't open a business bank account without an EIN. So that's why this is in sequential order. When it comes down to a bank account, now again, this is, I don't wanna say an extra step, but it is an important step and it is a step that I would do if I wanna make sure that everything's on the up and up. Different bank accounts, and I'm gonna explain why. National bank account, regional bank account, and credit union. Why is he talking about having three different bank accounts? A lot of times when it comes down to banking, you want to do something called building a relationship. For example, somebody who has a relationship with Chase of a year, two years, three years, four years, whatever the case may be, but has a 680 credit score, has a much higher chance of getting more funding than somebody who has a 750 and just opened up a Chase account. Why? Because of that relationship. So if you want to go ahead and build banking relationships with different banks that you know you might want to turn around and get funding from, start banking with them. Put $50, well, Chase's minimum is like a thousand unless you have a CPC account. But if you want to get a national bank account such as Chase or such as Wells Fargo or such as Bank of America or whatever it case may be, start building that relationship with them. If you want to get a bank account with a regional bank such as Truist or Key Bank, start building that relationship with them. Start putting some money in. How much money should I put in? Whatever you can, $50, $100 a month, whatever the case may be. Credit union, if I want to start building a relationship with them, like a Navy Federal, like a Pensac, whatever the case may be. Start doing some business with them. Next step. Now we wanna start talking about these tiers. Now I know a lot of people talk about tier accounts. Bro, what are tier accounts? What is the importance of tier accounts? Well, the number one thing when it comes down to credit building on a credit profile, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, is that people want to see a mix. People want to see history. People wanna see different phases of credit. And the same thing comes down when it comes down to business credit, right? I wanna see that other people are lending you money so that I can feel comfortable lending you money. Think about it like this. Think about it like this, right? Say somebody from school asked you for $100, but you found out that they didn't pay Tom, Dick, and Harry back that $100 when they borrowed it from them. How confident would you feel lending money to them? Or on the other hand, 
if you know that this is the first time this person is ever borrowing money and they have no previous track record, how comfortable would you feel lending money to them? You feel what I'm saying? That's the same way that the banks look at it and that they take it a step further. So now, what these tier accounts do is they start building up your business credit by showing that you're responsible with money. So for example, I might set up a tier account with a website like Uline, right? Where Uline's gonna give you something called a net 30. What is a net 30? A net 30 is where I have 30 days to pay something. So I can essentially get the item, get 30 days to pay it off. But here's a trick, right? We don't wanna wait 30 days. We wanna pay it off in as little 7 to 15 days. We wanna show them we're proactive and they're ex we're especially responsible with the bread. You feel what I'm saying? Let's get to it. And these are some other ones that you can do in literally as early as 30 days. Uline, Ranger, Suma, Quill. Let's get active. Next one. Last but not least. Well, not last but not least. We still got another step. Tier twos. Tier two. So once I've done my tier ones, I want to go down and get some tier twos. Enterprise, Sam's Club, Amazon, Office Depot. But this is what I want to focus on real quick. The tier threes. The God level card. The God level banks. We're talking to Chase, Amex, Bank of America, US Bank, Navy Fed. These are the ones that give off the bat. These are the ones we want to get active with. These are the ones we really want to shoot for. These are the ones that give all those high limits. So essentially, fun fact to kind of bring everything all together, I can damn well have a 680 credit score with a well-built credit profile and go straight to tier three. I might not even have to do any of this other stuff. I want to, just to be on the up and up, I'm definitely gonna need an LLC and EIN for sure. But essentially, once I have that, I got 680 and a high and a good credit profile, I can get active straight tier threes. I got people in the space and leads who literally just opened up an LLC get $55,000 in funding. The plan works when you do. This whole process can ideally take about 60 to 90 days, but again, like I said, you got that good credit profile, you can get active. Y'all, I really hope y'all enjoyed this video, man. Break down how you can essentially get $50,000 in funding with a brand new LLC. And again, of course, make sure that if you are looking to start your own event space business using this other people's money, make sure y'all tap in with us at Event Space Leads. Drop the link down below. Thanks you get it,